but it's one that's still pretty mad. George Knapp, Eyewitness News 8. Affordable daycare does not come easy for low-income families. Up next, we'll have some economical advice for families in need of child care services. That as we continue our series, Caring for Kids. Clark County Commissioners today held an angry debate on whether to rehire a consultant. The consultant does public relations work for the Water District. Some county leaders say that's a waste of the taxpayers' money. As Eric Spillman reports, today's discussion of the issue was filled with bickering. When it comes to water awareness, we all have a lot to learn. At least that's the opinion of county commissioners. Last May, they voted to spend $70,000, a private consultant to do public relations work on water issues. That same consultant, Sarah Katz, was back before them again today, asking to be rehired for another six-month period. But some commissioners had questions. When we originally had the contract, I was under the impression that it really was for water conservation, meaning don't waste water. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, we got into the water importation issue. You know, I, I just don't think that it was quite uh, you know, I'm, what, I'm, I was, what I was, you know, I was I'm, told I'm it was I'm sorry I let you ask the question because you're, you getting, always into, are. Well, you're getting into a tirade here that, that doesn't fit at this particular point. How did we get from what I thought I was approving in one public meeting into basically something else. Well, I don't know that you're ever going to get anybody to tell you what went on in your mind at a meeting. The consultant, it turns out, not only worked on water conservation, she also sat in on meetings with commissioners to discuss plans to import water from rural Nevada. And for that, she charged the county $125 an hour. Commissioner Don Schlesinger said he doesn't think the water district needs to hire a PR firm to do that kind of work, but he was cut off. This is the meeting to have the big discussion and speech about it. That is a relevant Criteria. But you've already indicated what your decision is. Why belabor the point? Because the public has a right to know, not just public officials. That's why we are a public body, Commissioner Christensen. That's exactly right. That's why you don't make deals with the general manager of the water district. You ask her to bring it before the board. We'll discuss it here. Didn't I'm ask not for interested deals. in your I asked for a point of information manager. to educate the public. I did not ask for a deal. You're out of order. So are you. To make those kind of remarks, I think, is, is just, it, it doesn't belong here. I, we're a grown-up society. We don't need that kind of high school stuff. In the end, the board voted to hire the consultant again for another six months at a cost of $70,000. The vote was six to one. Commissioner Schlesinger is the only one who voted against it. Eric Spillman, Eyewitness News 8. Oxygenated fuel and a cool winter are being credited for cutting down the number of unhealthy carbon monoxide days during the winter in Las Vegas. Mike Naylor of the Clark County Health District Air Pollution Division says Clark County had only 14 unhealthy days compared with 32 days last year. Naylor says that the lower than normal winter temperatures also contributed to the air quality. Air pollution officials have extended the oxygenated fuel program to run through March 31st of this year. The program began on October. October 1st. The rising cost of child care is keeping many low-income parents from finding jobs. Child care is the main reason why low-income mothers give up their job search. That according to a recent survey. Experts say affordable child care can actually reduce a family's dependence on welfare. In the second part of our series, Who's Caring for Your Kids? Melissa Jew reports on what's available to low-income families in Las Vegas. Give me a kiss. You'll be good, okay? Estella Fowler says goodbye to her three-year-old son, Christopher, at Variety Day Home. She does so quickly because she's late. Come on. Bye-bye. She's late for her own class in the room next door. Estella is a caregiver at Variety Day Home because she wanted to work after having her fifth child and because it's the only way she can afford child care for her three youngest children. I can't afford the child care for three kids because that would run me like, let's say, $200 a week for three of them because that's 
And that's, I think that's the cheapest because I called a lot of child care and some of them like 80, 85 for one child. Variety Day Home is one of three daycare centers in this area that offers sliding scale fees to low income families. 75% of the parents who use this center have incomes below the poverty line and there are hundreds on the waiting list. Most of our parents are entry level or working to, up from entry level. Their companies don't want to give them time off if children are sick, etc. If you can't find good child care, you're paying upward of $65, $70 a week in many places, and that just absorbs the whole check. The average cost for a three-year-old child in a Las Vegas daycare center is $72 a week. That's more than $3,700 a year, compared to the national average of $68 a week, or $3,500 annually. For family or group home care, the average cost of a three-year-old is $65 a week. Children under the age of two will run you about $80 to $90 a week in both daycare and home care facilities. You want some apple? Estella only pays $25 a week for her three children at Variety Day Home. Her kids are luckier than others. Federal programs like Head Start offer free child care to low-income families, but there's not enough. There are twice as many families who qualify for the program in the Las Vegas area. Experts say the government should offer more help. I'd like to see the government take it over and become early childhood to be the same as schools, public schools, so that it's just part of a regular process of our school system. So I think it should be a voucher program set up where the parents qualify for the assistance and then the parents can choose where they want to use those vouchers. More like uh, the food stamp program is what I would like to see them implement. State lawmakers are considering legislation that would offer financial help to working parents. Legislators are also proposing state grants to expand the Head Start program. In the meantime, Sister McGuire is forced to turn many families away from the only child care they can afford. Melissa Jew, Eyewitness News 8. Tomorrow we will look at corporate child care and find out what local employers are doing to help their workers. Another great day in the Las Vegas Valley as February draws to a close. Eric Randall's up next with a complete forecast. And who's the best in high school basketball? We'll have a preview of the playoffs a little later in sports. I'm Eric Randall, the weatherman here at Channel 8, and I'm looking for a few pointers, uh, weather pointers. If your civic group has an event you'd like mentioned on Eyewitness News at 6, then send me your pointer and event information to Eric Randall's guest pointer at this address. Then watch Channel 8's Eyewitness News at 6. Get the point? It is weather time. Eric Randall's <laughs> here with a pointer. I learned the other day what this means, yes. and uh, you have the pointer. This is the uh, sign signal for I love you. A very special pointer for those of you wondering whatever happened to Michael Jackson's other glove. Um, <laughs> no, actually, actually, this is made for us from the uh, by the Las Vegas High School program for the deaf. It consists of uh, 12 students, and they are uh, promoting course sign language classes and want everybody out there to know that if you are interested in taking a sign language class, that they are available through Clark County Community College. Mm -hmm. And if you would like some more information on that, of course, you can call the Community College. The number is in the phone book. And once again, this is from Las Vegas High School. And That's as we nice. said, the sign means I love you. We actually got this around uh, Valentine's Day, but we had to get some other stuff out of the way first. So consider this a belated Valentine's <laughs> Day nice. wish to all of you <laughs> out there. We had a good weather wish for everyone today. Sunny skies, it came true. We had a high of 69 degrees. Every night low was 39. We were above once again the normal high, but right where we should be as far as the normal low goes. Pollution index after a moderate reading overnight was back down into the good category today. The count was 36. In the Middle East, a few clouds scattered here and there, but for the most part, clear skies are the rule. And uh, by Wednesday, not that I guess it really kind of matters anymore, but uh, the Iraqi troops may encounter a little rain as they run to the north. A uh, chance for some showers will continue across eastern portions of Iraq, down into Kuwait, and also that activity continuing through central portions of Saudi Arabia. Temperatures shaping up like this. Uh, Baghdad should have a high of 63 degrees. Riyadh expecting 78 degrees with an overnight low of 51. Another nice day for Las Vegas right now. The downtown area reporting 65 degrees with North Las Vegas in at 64. 62 for Dallas Air Force Base and Sunrise. Manor 
Henderson and Spring Valley tied at 63. At 60 for Boulder City, Paradise Valley 69 degrees and 29. Up at Mount Charleston at the airport, 64 humidity, 14 percent. The barometer 29.93 and falling, and the winds are from the east at 5 miles per hour. Some high-level clouds have moved into parts of southern Nevada. But skies are clear across the rest of the Silver State right now, but a large arrow, arrow of, or, yeah, arrow, you can see what I got on my mind, <laughs> an area of clouds billowing in to the central and the southern coast of California right now. These clouds are being kicked out in advance of a cold front, an associated low-pressure area that is still well off the coast, but this frontal system is going to be moving moving in an east northeasterly direction and that is going to whip it into the uh, central and northern coast of California by tomorrow afternoon. This in turn will start to bring some increased clouds into southern Nevada by tomorrow and then as the system continues to move farther to the east it will result in a chance for some showers by tomorrow evening into tomorrow night and continuing into Thursday about a 40 percent chance for some showers and of course with the showers down around our way so will come a chance for some snow up in the higher elevations. Right now, though, no rain associated with that storm. Nice conditions across most of the west. It has been a little bit wet around western southern portions of Texas. Snow falling across the upper and the middle Mississippi Valley, also the eastern Great Lakes through Pennsylvania into central and southern New England. Some rain around the central Atlantic coastal region and a little more of the wet stuff falling over southern portions of Florida. Now, we have a good chance of rain heading our way, too, as the storm system moves in. Our forecast calling for a few changes for tonight. We can ex still, still expect the fair skies to stay with us. Lows will be around 40 to 45 degrees. Winds will be variable at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, becoming mostly cloudy. Highs will be around 65 to 70 degrees, and the winds will be on the light side. Those clouds will then lead to a chance for some showers by tomorrow night. And that will continue into Thursday and also into Friday as well. Mostly fair skies should return by the weekend. Temperatures will cool down a little bit. Upper 60s tomorrow, mid 60s by Thursday and Friday, and back to near 70 degrees by Sunday as the sun starts to shine once again. But as we said, though, for those who have been wanting some rain and some snow in the higher elevation, storm system is moving our way. About a 40% chance of rain by tomorrow night. And once again, thanks to Las Vegas High School for their pointer pointer. Gary. Okay, thanks, Eric. Playoffs are underway in high school hoops. Scott Higgins will have the story next. And we'll take a quick look back at the Rebels' latest victory. Sports is next. Stay with us. Scott Higgins is here with sports. The biggest lead last night was 18 points, so I guess that's a that's a tight game. Huh? Yeah, it is for the Rebels, I guess. <laughs> what, more importantly, though, what this sets up is the undefeated season. Yes. The Rebels have only Cal State Fullerton left. That should be a win. I don't yeah. think I'm being too bold in saying the Rebels will take care of Fullerton. And then it's time for the history books for UNLV. Now the Rebels say they don't want to talk about an undefeated season just yet. Although, if they take it one game at a time, as they often like to do, history is just one game away. Last night made it possible, though, an impressive win at Las Cruces, New Mexico. New Mexico State defense, a jumble early, allowing the Rebels some dangerous shots. Anderson Hunt plants the three, Rebels by six. A little cherry picking doesn't hurt either. Larry Johnson puts it down with authority, and the lead is 10. Play of the night, George Ackles dancing with himself. Big George picks up the assist and the deuce. But don't mail it in yet. State rallies. Keith Brown from out of town hits it. Rebels by only five. Now, you can't get cute with them, though. State fumbles the snap right here. Rebels ball on the fast break. Watch this great turnaround pass from Anderson Hunt. LJ slams it home. Then... Hunt, let's go a three. It is no good, but Ackles, the garbage man, puts it down. Beautiful play. Late first half, the intensity never stops. Anderson Hunt with a great save, and his buddy Greg Anthony waits for Hunt to get back in the play. He does. He hits. UNLV by nine at halftime. Second half, Ags got no closer than eight. Just too sloppy. The Rebels turn this bungle into the fast break and the resulting nine-point lead after Hunt makes the lay-in. Later on, you're looking at Stacy Ogman now. The wrap on him is his jump shot. Out to prove the scouts wrong last night. Laces a three right there, and then with time running down, the ball just seemed to bounce UNLV's way. Hunt snags it and cans it. Rebels mail it home in a tough place to win. Final, 86-74. to 74. We were really up for the game. I, our kids have been that way all year, though. It really amazes me that, you know, any kind of a letdown, and we'd have got beat there, any kind, because they're a quick ball club, and, and they have such a great following, and, and they were so ready for us. 
and we had to be at our best, and we were. And New Mexico State has a great deal of talent. They're very well coached, a very disciplined team, and uh, they don't they don't beat themselves. So I think they, they're going to really uh, surprise some some very good teams in the NC2As if uh, they can just get by the first game or two and, and, and keep that uh, that mental drive going. Losers go home in high school hoops today. The postseason party is underway. Two playoff games this afternoon at Chaparral. Bishop Gorman take, take, uh, took on basic. The Wolves earned a spot by knocking off Votech yesterday. Gales doing a good job of finding the open man. Kerry Duckworth uncovered top of the key, rips it. But the Wolves, heavy underdogs today, stayed with Gorman hoop for hoop. Charles Gibbs pumps, drives, and scores. Gales a little too strong at the end, though. Alex Gonzalez, a nice touch and the foul. Bishop Gorman advances over basic 60 to 51. To Rancho and Chaparral, Cowboys with some good ball movement. Morris, don't Boris. Taylor with the open J puts it down. Chaparral by six. Rancho responds, though. Tim Macklin, quick pass to Marcus Smith for three. And it's a ball game, folks. Cowboys finally widen the gap. Damian Smith, a little razzle dazzle. Watch him drive to the hole. Chaparral advances over Rancho, final 86 to 81. Two more games tomorrow, and I'm sorry we ran out of time. We had a decent primetime play, too, but we're just not be able to get well, it. We'll in. look forward to it. All right. Okay. Thanks. thanks Scott. Saddam Hussein says his troops have withdrawn from Kuwait, but President Bush says tonight the war will continue. We'll have the very latest on events in the Persian Gulf in just a moment. Brian Gresh has been checking out the latest developments from the Persian Gulf. He joins us now with all the news, Brian. Yeah, bringing everyone up to speed at this point, uh, Paul and Gary. The Allies, of course, are in control of most of Kuwait at this hour. The, uh, the Iraqis are said to be in a full retreat, but there are still some stiff pockets of resistance. From the president, the U.S.-led coalition is ahead of schedule in its goal to force Iraqi troops from Kuwait. Mr. Bush today labeled Saddam Hussein's speech an outrage. Saddam's announcement earlier withdrawing his troops was seen as a chance for the Iraqi leader to claim victory in the midst of a rout. Mr. Bush says the Allied barrage will continue until Iraqi troops throw down their arms. The coalition will therefore continue to prosecute the war with undiminished intensity. As we announced last night, we will not attack unarmed soldiers in retreat. We have no choice but to consider retreating combat units as a threat and respond accordingly. Anything else would risk additional United States and coalition casualties. The only way to end the war, says the president, is for Saddam Hussein to accept the terms set down by the United States last week. A Pentagon source says hundreds of U.S. Marine tanks and infantry have defeated a division of Iraq's elite Republican Guards west of Kuwait. The source says they have gone on to engage yet another Republican Guard division. Still, Allied commanders warn the war is not yet over. Commanders say the Iraqi army is collapsing and Allied soldiers will continue to attack. Marine Brigadier General Richard Neal hinted today an end to the war is in fact near. He told reporters the U.S. Central Command will talk about the details of its battle plan in less than 48 hours. American and other Allied troops are cutting through southern Iraq. They are meeting some resistance, but are basically having their way. Traveling with the troops, CBS reporter Scott Pelley found Iraqis are moving either away from the Americans in retreat or toward them in surrender. At dawn on the third day, U.S. heavy artillery in southern Iraq was silent. Allied forces established bases more than 70 miles inside enemy territory with little resistance. Iraqi soldiers are abandoning the defense of their nation by the thousands. Many are hungry. This man had no shoes when he was found by U.S. troops. The Allies have established a massive force in what may now be called occupied Iraq. Logistics bases are being built unchallenged by enemy soldiers or the remnants of the Iraqi Air Force. Soldiers manning anti-aircraft guns have not fired a shot. It's just like taking candy from a baby, I don't know. U.S. troops are cheered by their progress and now many want more than just the liberation of Kuwait. I think we should take the man out of power because it just gave him the objective to come right back in again. If you wanted to, once we pull out, he'd probably come right back in with some backing from somebody else also. You know? So while we're here, we 
Let's just go all the way through to Iraq. The gigantic Allied column is moving north hour by hour, cutting off the Iraqi forces in Kuwait from their homeland. As enemy troops move west, they are meeting this huge and growing Allied force. Scott Pelley, CBS News, with Allied troops in occupied Iraq. Foreign ministers from Britain, France, and Germany will be in Washington this week to map out post-war plans with the United States. Pentagon spokesman Pete Williams says long-term planning on the Gulf situation is underway, but no details have been yet worked out. Williams says the Navy may have to increase its presence in the Gulf to keep the region stable. On Capitol Hill, the House Foreign Operations Subcommittee opened a hearing on the region's problems. Members say the question now is whether the U.S. will see to it that the region is stabilized after the war. A couple of our letters to the editor tonight questioned the decision by President Bush to send troops into the Persian Gulf. One viewer writes, who's to say that after we take care of Saddam Hussein that yet another country will take on the U.S. in a similar situation? DG from Henderson writes, I think we are lacking education on what really started Desert Storm. We, the public, need to know what really happened in the Kuwait takeover by Iraq. And finally, DM from G. Nevada writes, I was a military dependent for 14 years, and my husband wants to go back. We should show the Iraqis that we are a people united, not divided. If you would like your views on the war in the Gulf aired on Channel 8, we'd like you to write to us. Letters to the editor. There's the address, KLAS Television, Post Office Box 15047, the zip 89114. And that's it from the Gulf War tonight. Okay, thanks, Thank Brian. Thank you, Brian. Coming up, what do Nevada motorists really want when it comes to automobile insurance? <laughs> Review Journal columnist John Ralston has the answer in tonight's commentary. Stay with us. Lawmakers in Carson City are preparing to take up soaring auto insurance rates. Most of the attention is expected to focus on various no-fault insurance proposals. Strong opposition will come from the state's trial lawyers because no-fault would outlaw lawsuits after accidents. Review Journal columnist John Ralston joins us now with some news about this. Well, we've, we've talked before, this is going to be one of the biggest battles up in Carson yes. City on, on auto insurance. And there, there's a new poll out that gives us a clue about how people feel about it. In this case, the jury does not agree with any of the lawyers, at least not right now. The jury, also known as the public, overwhelmingly supports approval of a no-fault law. That's according to a just-completed issues poll conducted for a group of gaming companies by national pollster Lance Terrence. The survey asked 600 Nevadans about the insurance battle. They, they decided on no-fault that by an overwhelming mar margin of 2 to 1, they say yes to no-fault. So how will this poll affect lawmakers once they learn of the results? Well, this bunch is as politically sensitive as any in history. After the disastrous 300% pension increase two years ago, legislators shudder at the thought of displeasing the public. After all, they witnessed the political death sentence meted out to 11 of their colleagues last year. So this new poll will undoubtedly increase momentum for no fault and cause worry among the trial lawyers' lobby. The survey also is sure to disturb Assembly Majority Leader Gene Porter. He's the attorney and vocal insurance industry critic who doesn't fancy the idea of no fault. Porter could find some of his allies wilting once the poll numbers waft up to Carson City. Finally, Governor Bob Miller also will be interested in this survey. He hasn't taken a stand yet on no fault, but this news could make his decision a little easier. The bottom line is that Miller and the legislature will do anything they can not to be judged guilty of ignoring the auto insurance problem. Now, they have an advantage most lawyers don't in the courtroom. They know what the jury is thinking. What do the insurance companies say about no fault? Well, it depends on the proposal. They sure like it a lot better than a, than a rate rollback. Some of the no fault proposals actually contain a rollback, rate rollback. They like the ones without the rate rollback. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks, sir. Coming up tonight on Eyewitness News Update at 11 o'clock, surveillance cameras in area high schools have passed their first trial runs. Will they be put in your child's school? Find out tonight at 11 o'clock. And even though there is serious drought affecting some western states, we'll tell you how your lawn can be green as a football field without using one drop of water. Those stories, plus the very latest on the situation in the Persian Gulf, coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. We hope you will join us. That is our 6 o'clock report. Thank you for watching. Good night. We'll see you at 11.
local news 24 hours a day. Watch Eyewitness News 8 every half hour on CNN Headline News, Prime Cable Channel 20.